I'm Greg Burton. I work for the provost, but I'm also still a full-fledged member of the psychology department at Seton Hall. Now, Non-Cooperative Games, the 1950 paper by John Forbes Nash, is, I'm pretty sure, the first scholarly paper I ever had to read where the author was younger than I was at the time I, I read it. It was published when John Nash was 22, and I read it in grad school. I was in experimental psychology, but I'd been loaned to the electrical engineering department to work on a grant they had about team behavior. And actually an undergraduate handed me a copy of Nash's paper and said, oh, we all read this in class. This is standard reading for systems engineering, electrical engineering. I was in a field of psychology called ecological psychology, which also had some of its main pioneering papers in 1950. And the idea of ecological psychology was to find an alternative to the constant dialectic that was always going on in psychology about learning versus innate influences. The attitude of ecological psychology was before we're ready to talk about things being learned, before we're prepared to talk about instincts and innate influences on behavior, we don't even know enough about the dynamics of how animals and their needs interact with their environment. It's like talking about if the reason why a pig doesn't fly is because it's learned not to fly because it's been punished due to some unfortunate experiences or it has this instinct that suppresses its otherwise ability to fly. You don't need to talk about that. The aerodynamics of the pig don't interact on Earth with the aerodynamics of the air. It's the dynamics of the interaction that spare you from having to get into the internal psychology of the pig. And although I doubt it was on his mind at the time, the theory of non-cooperative games is kind of in the same spirit. You don't really need to delve into personality traits of the actor, of the consumer, of the person potentially interacting. You don't need to talk about their learning history. Just the dynamics of how one person's needs, one person's knowledge interacts with another allows you to predict a lot of things. That spirit influenced all kinds of fields throughout the 50s and 60s, 70s, leading to the present day. There are many themes in social psychology that really were inspired by and influenced by the theory of non-cooperative games. Now you can't have a social psychology class without talking about the tragedy of the commons, helping behavior, uh, prisoner's dilemma. And then over in cognitive psychology, under the guidance of Herbert Simon, Maurice Soleil, other people who've won the Nobel Prize for analyzing behavior, Kahneman and Tversky, of course, the whole field of decision-making, uh, discussions about Bayes' theorem and uh, the limitations and how it might apply to human behavior were all set on that course uh, in the 50s, partly because of non-cooperative games.